Hey everyone, so day two of my oh, journey into um, healing. Uh, so I just got back from a hike. You can see these. They look actually better than they did yesterday. Um, I did put that salve on. I'm gonna put some more on here in a minute when I go wash my face. I'm actually getting ready to go on the radio. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit, I guess, first I wanted to say that um, I guess I was wanting to talk about a little bit about the oils, like I said, what I'm using currently, because I can't use anything that has a blood thinning <clears throat> oil, uh, constituent in it. And um, so that I'm having to change a, a lot. Luckily, this was recognized by the surgeon. So she and I had an extensive conversation about what it is I do. Um, in fact, she's passed on to the other physicians in, um, in charge or part of my treatment. Um, she gave me a really high testimonial, you know, referred to me as being highly educated in this area. So everyone's taking my word seriously and she recognizes the fact that oils have blood thinning qualities to them or they can. So that absolutely ruled out patchouli because I use patchouli for um, deodorant. I've been using patchouli for um, many, many years. I probably have been using it as a deodorant for about at least 25 years now. So I had to eliminate that. Now that doesn't work for everybody. Just know that the way your chemistry works is um, it may conflict with patchouli. So patchouli does work for me and it's not that strong and it makes a difference. I'm just become my signature scent. Any time somebody smells patchouli, they ask if I'm in the room, so. <laughs> but I can't use it. Um, oftentimes I was using um, laurel leaf for um, wanting to support my nitric oxide synthase process and I've had to eliminate that because that actually comes with eugenol in it so I've had to eliminate that so um, I've substituted things like Elang I use currently using Elang under the arms and that actually is working quite well I was surprised um, yeah I was actually surprised for that um, because I have this osteo in my foot um, I do use turmeric from time to time as well as eucalyptus radiata to help with pain and to help. But then I'm including vetiver in this. Um, I know that sounds like a really strange thing, but vetiver is actually um, phenomenal for circulation. What I'm wanting to do is just um, support circulation in that area because if my feet get overworked, meaning if I stand on them for too long or I walk, you know, my, I take a hike and my feet get too hot, then my feet swell. Um, not bad, but you know what I'm saying? My toes become red and inflamed. It's just, it's because it's because of the arthritis. So I am using vetiver in that because it supports circulation and it actually helps to move fluid. Laurel leaf helps to move the lymph. That's significant, especially when you're dealing with um, stress. Again, I had to cut it out. So vetiver is supporting the fluid movement as well as circulation and it also is helping with um, my hormonal system which is significant. Um, I felt a touch of a cold coming on so I jumped in and threw some star anise on my neck. Now that's not one I really want to go to very much but um, that is actually that actually contains the um, the constitution Pardon me, Ooh, I just bit my tongue. The constituents used for making Tamiflu, and because we are in that cold and flu season, and I'm going into surgery in a week, I don't want that to come in. So I gave my, I dosed myself with a shot of the, um, not really a shot, but you know what I'm saying, um, star anise to help prevent that. And, um, and the eucalyptus helps with the pain in my joints, in my feet, and it also helps to keep, um, I also put that on my throat too, just, you know, in the event that this is a bacterial thing, but I'm sure it's pretty viral, so eucalyptus isn't gonna touch that. I really just like it for the pain in my foot. And like I said, turmeric helps to keep the inflammation down and throwing the vetiver in there to me is very, very important. I'm also using turmeric because it helps support the liver. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to use any black pepper at this time, uh, which would enhance the, uh, the effectiveness of the turmeric because black pepper, um, the pepper, pepperinone, I forget the, that constituent's hard to pronounce, pepperione, um, actually is required for the assimilation and the improvement of turmeric, but that would be more for the herb. Um, and when it comes to the oils, you have the, just the flat out constituents. And so I'm not so much worried about the effectiveness of turmeric at this point. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've been using. I'm trying to keep it minimal, um, 
because I'm going into surgery and so I'm concerned about that. But see there again, I'm also considering my hormonal system. So one of the things that I thought of was um, a lemmy, to start including a lemmy. And uh, the question for me came up around clary sage, but um, I think I'm gonna stay away from that just because of its ability to activate estrogen activity. So a lemmy is a better one. And the reason I'm looking at this is because the next thing I have in three weeks is an appointment with a medical oncologist to talk about endocrine therapy, which I will politely object to. Um, I will hear her out. Um, you know, it's only, I do believe in the system, but I actually have, I, I already know what I'm going to do. And the reason I say that, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it. It will change on a regular basis and we'll get into that in a minute, but, um, I do respect her work, and so I'm going to at least hear her out. Um, from what I can tell, the type of medication they're gonna put me on, and I've done a video about this, I think, already. Um, I think actually I did it on IGTV, but they it's going to shut down, it's gonna block the use of estrogen. And while that is beneficial when you're dealing with this type of breast cancer, uh, that's the reason why I'm wanting to use caution with even with oils at this point that act like estrogen in the body because these estrogen receptors feed off of that. So um, so there's another example as to why I'm being, like like why my, my selection is minimal. Um, I am using uh, tarragon and occasionally coriander on my stomach now that I'm thinking about it. Um, Alemi is one that I'm thinking about with, or using I think I just made it really confusing. So I am using, let me just back up a minute. I am using Elang as a deodorant. I am using eucalyptus, turmeric, and vetiver on my feet um, because of the inflammation that occurs because of the vetiver specifically for the hormonal support and the cardiovascular support, um, but more specifically the hormonal support which is required at this point. It's really about modulating the endocrine system. Now, the next thing was I said I use tarragon and um, sometimes ginger root and sometimes coriander on my on my abdomen just to support the digestive system. Um, that's important to me right now. It's important to all of us, truthfully. Um, I just recently did a lot of investigation on digestion and bottom line is we all are living with some form of digestive disruption and really supporting that is important and now I'm taking it on seriously, including even taking um, betaine supplements to support my um, breakdown of macronutrients as well as my microbiota. That said, Alemi is one that I've just introduced because of its support of the immune system. I um, just recently ordered myself a whole new shipment of Vitex as another one for, again, the hormonal system. And I need to talk with, I need to find out more specifically um, from the medical oncologist and then also have a visit with my an acupuncturist who specializes in oncology because my intent, intention is to team up with her, at least for myself, to um, regulate my hormonal system this way with oils and acupuncture instead of the medication they wanna put me on because as I mentioned, it blocks the use of estrogen, which while that may seem beneficial, is only going to trigger the body to adapt accordingly. So if the body is not using estrogen as it's supposed to be, or like the receptors would pick them up and metabolize, assimilate, and excrete, then the body's going to adapt in a way that's necessary for this, for my body to continue on because hormones are required for everything from healing to sleep to everything, release of iron, um, thousands of functions in the body, thousands of processes require all of our hormones. So the importance for me is really beginning to stabilize and knowing, um, not wanting to stimulate estrogen or act like estrogen in the body, such as with phytoestrogens, um, which I've talked a lot about, but just really kind of stabilizing the hormonal system and focusing on my digestive system. And that's probably the angle I'm gonna take when I start working with the, um, with the acupuncturist. Right now, I'm really honestly overwhelmed with all of this. Um, I've got quite a few months ahead of me. 
and um, I have no idea how I'm going to show up on any given day. I wanted to say about that salve that I showed you yesterday, uh, that that is, um, I think it really made a big difference. And it, besides keeping it moist, it actually allowed it to breathe. And um, at the same time, it is helping to stimulate the production of healthy tissue regeneration. And that's what I like. Um, as far as, I mean, I, I think I'm going to have to have more removed because I had the, you know, not the autopsy, the biopsies done. So uh, there was a lot of things I was going to say today and I just completely spaced it out because I think I'm just getting ready for this radio show and um, which is going to be on how we are afraid of ourselves and how things like this, you know, and breast cancer and other things just terrify people and yet it's still an opportunity for us to really learn and grow and um, heal. You know, I don't need people to heal me. I need them, you know, I, I, I can take care of myself and I don't mean, I'm not trying to sound arrogant. We all need one another, but I think illness really triggers us and um, I'm not seeking community in the sense of I want to be um, needy. I'm just reaching out, I'm, I'm doing this because it's actually helpful for me to feel um, like it's just time, just it's just time for me to surrender and just be real. And um, so the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I want to empower this. Is really what it, you know, I've got people offering to come stay with me and come visit and it's like, wow, it's really, really overwhelming. And so I'm just trying to breathe through all of that. Anyway, hope you guys are doing well. If I can remember what else I was going to say today, I'll talk, I'll make a note and tell you tomorrow. Um, sorry about that, but I'll be back tomorrow. Hope you guys um, have a great afternoon, wherever you are.